So welcome to Techno Day at Life, and today's episode is very special. First, we're going to ans be answering the most commonly asked questions, and then next, we're going to be installing transmission with an open VPN container. So then, you would basically any touring you would be doing would be inside a VPN container. So if you need to download copies of material you already own then you can do it now uh, and as always make sure you like and subscribe if you found this helpful and here we go now so before we get started let's answer a few questions first question how do i pick a container to use so basically open media vault is debian but it's a little bit different because it has a web ui which isn't doesn't necessarily work well with everything and so what i do is basically install each container and see how it works with open media vault and so if a container doesn't work well then i get rid of it next what i do is try to set up the container and see if it's easy. So basically, I like as easy as possible and some containers, they have a lot of configuration and they're not so easy. And so that's how I find the containers that I use. Once I find a container, I'll usually install it, install it on all five of my servers. And so that way I can test out different configurations and see what's easiest and works best. And a lot of times what I'll do is add in each configuration at a different step. So I'll do it the easy way first. And then each step along the way, I'll add in a little more. So finally, we get to the last one, which is the one that I actually do in the video. And so by doing it this way, I make sure that all the different steps work and that it's easy to install. And so the last question I get is, how come it takes me so long to uh, put out one of these videos? So basically, as you can see through the two steps here, I've done a lot of installing and uninstalling and testing things out. So for the open VPN container uh, video, which you're about to watch, so altogether I probably put in about 30 hours into making this video. And so that's how we got where we are today. Okay, so let's get started. So first we're going to go to Docker. If you don't have Docker installed, I'll leave a link up into the top right corner of how to do that. Next we're going to search. And that search is going to be how gene. And so we're going to click on this first container, how gene transmission open VPN and start that. Once that's done installing, click close. And then we're going to click on that and we're going to click info. And so for open VPN uh, with transmission, uh, there are a bunch of different things we need to configure. And so we'll go through some of those right now and then we'll go through them quicker later. So if we just take a look at the registry here, you can see there's a double, a couple of different things here. So since we're using uh, open media vaults, we have to change how this is done. So that's one reason why this container hasn't worked for other people. And then basically just to get it running, we just need to put in some data volumes, uh, the time, our VPN provider, our username and password, and our local network. Everything else pretty much is optional, okay? Now if we go down a little bit, so look up your VPN provider so mine's NordVPN, so when we actually put it in, we're going to put it in this way. If you're using some other VPN provider, make sure you have the right VPN uh, information for the config file. And so if you want to enable the firewall, then you're going to add this value. 
and it's going to be true. Uh, I tried this on my machine. Uh, I already have a, a firewall on my router. So uh, all it did was really slow down my machine to a crawl. So I wouldn't suggest doing this unless you have to. So one thing we are going to do is change what the transmission web UI looks like. So transmission is great at a lot of things, but the UI isn't the best. So if you don't know about these things, so this one makes it look very modern. Cat 2 is sort of a, not my most favorite. I don't even know how to describe it. Sort of old looking. And transmission web control. So not the most pretty uh, one, but it does give you all the information that you find in a normal uh, BitTorrent program. So I like that one the best. Here you can change your transmission options, but in my testing, everything tested fine as is. So I would not change anything. So next, these are for a web proxy. So basically to run other containers through our transmission open VPN container. So when we go to do this, we're going to put true. We don't need to change that. So we'll be leaving that the same. And then next week I will be putting in another video which will show how to enable the web proxy in their other programs. And this is our normal PUID and PGID. By default, the container is set up as root, which I wouldn't suggest leaving as, but you don't actually have to do these for it to work, but I would change them anyways. And then finally, to access the web host, uh, transmission that is, we're going to type in our IP address and then 9091, and then we'll be able to get in. So let's get started. So first, click Run Image. And so the container name we're going to call Transmission Open VPN. Have it sync with host, restart policy always. And we have to run as a privilege in privilege mode for it to work. Uh, host. And next we're going to be changing all sorts of values. So first we're going to change the VPN provider. So whatever VPN you're using, I'm using ORP NordVPN. Then we need to put in our username and password. Of course, here you want to put in your real username and password, not username and password. And then click the check marks next to each of those to commit it. And then we're going to scroll down almost to the bottom here. And so we're going to click on web UI, PUID, PGID, and web proxy. So we'll start at web proxy. We're going to change that to true. My PUID is 1000. My PIG is 100. Again, you can leave these as root if you want. And then for me, I like the transmission web control uh, UI. So we put that there. And so then we're going to commit all these. So next, we're going to make sure that we can uh, actually look at the container once it's running from our local hosts. So we'll go back over to the info page. So to make sure we can access the container, we need to follow the directions here. So what we need to do is type in local network and then our IP address. So this should be your IP address. And the important thing for here is this last part. So you can see if we look back here, my IP address is 192.168.254.26. So what we would do is type in 192.168.254. And then for this last part, you skip the uh, last section, put in 0 slash 24. And that's so your whole IP range is available. Once that's done, click plus. Next, we're going to go to container path. We're going to hit a slash in and we're going to click on config. So first thing is we're going to click on host path. Go down to our shared folders. Oh, except for we don't have a shared folder cr uh, created for this yet. So we're going to go to our Windows network, click on our server, go into app data, and we're going to create a new folder. And so this one's going to call be called uh, Transmission Open VPN. And then we can close that. Go back to our host path, shared folders, app data, click on that Transmission Open VPN, click OK. Hit the plus sign, hit the slash again. We're going to go to data, 
So we're going to go back to our shared folders and click on downloads and OK and click the plus sign. If you don't have the config, uh, the app data or the downloads folder, make sure you look at one of my installation videos and we'll show you how to set up everything. And also for the PUID and the PGID, if you don't know what those are, simply sign in and then type ID and your username and you will get those two values. Oh, and before we actually save this container, we're going to go to this section here under known issues and tips and tricks. And what we're looking for is this line here. It starts there. What this will do is if the connection is lost with the VPN, this will shut down the container. And then since we already have it on restart always, then it will restart the container. So let's do that right now. All I'm going to do is copy and paste this section. I'll show you how to do that. And make sure you get the whole line there in. So again, what this is going to do after it's in active, it's going to exit the container. And then because above we have it set to always, the container will restart and then reestablish that connection to the VPN. And then we're going to hit plus and then save. Okay, so now it's running. So if we go back over to this page, uh, if you remember, so we need to type in our IP address in 9091. And so how we get our IP address is we simply copy that. We can paste it here and then it's colon 9091. We're gonna hit enter. And so now we're in the transmission web control UI. You can switch it back to the original web UI and you can see over here in the corner there's that and then they also give you the option of a mobile UI which actually looks sort of like the modern UI that I was talking about there before. So as you can see this all looks very familiar so if you have ever uh, downloaded a term before you shouldn't know what you're doing here. So let's add in one more thing before we go on. So what we're going to do is add in a Chrome web extension and so if we go to the Chrome store and we type in transmission and then we're going to click on remote transmission plus plus add that extension next we're going to change our web host here so again our id is 192.168.254.26 so we're going to paste that here and we actually have to get rid of all the extra stuff just need the numbers in the dots. So once we've added that in, we're going to make sure we have one thing checked. So first, uh, if you add in a username or password to transmission, you may you have to make sure you add those here. Next, we're going to click on desktop notifications. So once we've done that, we click save. And now actually, let's test out our extension. So we're going to go to Ubuntu and try to download a server file here. Uh, you can see it's BitTorrent, so we're going to right click on that, download with remote transmission, click save, and down in the bottom right you can see it was successfully added. So now let's go up to our transmission web control, and it took me, I had to refresh that, but then it did show up. So now you can see it's downloading Ubuntu in our transmission web control. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe. And until then, have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.